Welcome here, folks. We have a lot to cover, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, this is probably going to be a little bit of a lengthy video, but when I'm finished, I want you to know that you're going to have the information and understand what is actually taking place today and the importance of it. And yes, we can know when the rapture is going to happen. We can get very, very close to when it's going to happen. And I'm going to bring that up towards the end of the video because first, something that is greatly misunderstood by many people that does not allow that person, if they do not understand, that they're not going to be able to connect the different events, why they take place, how they happen, etc. And that is Daniel 9. Daniel 9, I'm going to paraphrase and just jump around here, is greatly loved by God and he asks, he wants to know, and this is in reference to... Um, this is in reference to what Jeremiah had said, but he wants to be understood. He wants to understand what's going to happen to the Jews. That's the point. If you understand and read Daniel 9, you will know, see, understand that Daniel is not talking about the Gentiles. He's talking about the Jews. There's nothing to do with Gentiles, and neither did Jeremiah when he described what he did of the 70 weeks. So let's just quickly just go through this. I'm going to paraphrase and jump around here, but this is for you to read to understand. Okay, let's do this real quick right here. Um, let's see. In the first years, I, Daniel, understood books of numbers, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. Here's Daniel asking about that. Now he goes on, and, and this is pages, of course, and we have all the different verses, where it is seen that Asaph, I'm sorry, Asaph, this is where Daniel is covered in ashes and sackcloth, and he's praying, he's fasting. And he wants an answer, and, he, and, and, and God states that he loves Daniel very much, because Daniel has great faith, and so Gabriel comes to him. So here it is that he's confessing, He's praying for his people. He keeps right on doing that. We're going to come down to the important part. I said we're going to jump around a lot, but this is for you to read and catch on to later. Gabriel finally shows up, and he says, and he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh Daniel, I have now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. Guess what? We now get to understand what's going to happen to the Jews at 70 weeks. No. Let's, let's just real quickly hear the beginning of the supplication. This is what I told you about. Um, the commandment to come forth and come to show you, for thou art greatly loved, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. <coughs> Daniel's now going to be shown. This is so interesting because this is the, the God punishment to the Jewish people all the way until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. And, and here it is that that Gabriel said to him, I'm going to give you this. It's, it's up here. Um, let's see if we can see that. Um, Gabriel, right here. While I was speaking in prayer, Gabriel came to him to show him this vision, to give him this vision. Okay, let's jump down here. 2.24, it says right here, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgressions. Okay, this is the whole complete end. It's going to come to an end. <clears throat> That will be the end of the tribulation when our Lord Jesus Christ shows up. So here is Daniel. And we have to understand that by reading this, and, and you're going to begin to see it, 483 years has already taken place of the 490. Where did I get that number from? 70 weeks of 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Or, if you want to, you can say 69 weeks have been completed. And, and we're going to see that here in a minute. But the last seven is at the, it's up to God. It's his, his decision when he wants that last seven to get started. That's important to understand. So it's a, it's a floating end for that last seven. We know it as a tribulation. All right, let's go on here. Let me go back to it. <clears throat> yeah, I said let's go back to it. There we go. Computer doesn't always listen. All right, I just didn't press the button hard enough, I guess. Anyway. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, upon thy holy city, to finish the transgressions of sins. So here it is that he's giving everything that they need to know all the way uh, to anoint the most holy one. That's when Jesus returns. 24, so therefore know, uh, 
therefore, and understand that from going forth from the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, this is where the 483 years has already been complete. And I'm going to show you that here real quick. Let me move this page up here a little bit. That from going forth to the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem, the Messiah, the prince, uh, shall be seven weeks. Now, th- when you get into the seven weeks and three score and you begin to understand that, there's two ways that you have to see this. One is, is he's going to be talking about a time when something happens and he's going to go backwards. So these numbers aren't going to make sense to you. If you want to do a study on that, that only took me, I don't know, about three years to finally figure it out. But what the point it comes out to being is, is that 483 years is completed when, let's go up here, three score weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off. Are you catching on to that? The Messiah, this is... This is Jesus. This is the Jews Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. This is where he was crucified. So he's cut off from here. Of the people and of the prince that shall come and shall destroy the city, people of the prince. This is the first beast in Revelation 13, clearly understood just by reading a little bit more. So what did you have here? You have the time when... Jesus was cut off. Folks, what happened at that time? Jesus ascended up into heaven, and what happened after that, 10 days later? The Holy Spirit showed up, and that was the start of the church, wasn't it? Okay, now we got the start of the church. Here it is, but he was cut off, but not for himself. Now, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. Do not think this flood is water. This is of many people, and there's other places in Scripture to show. That just means a multitude of people. And unto the end of the war of desolations are determined. Ha-ha! Here is the start of that last seven years. Jesus is cut off. There's a time in between. And now, here it comes. And he shall confirm the covenant with many. This is the start of that last seven years. What happened between here and here? Where it's cut off? Because it's not about the Jews only. It's about the Gentile world. It's about you and I, about us. It's the church age. It's the time of the church, not the time of the Gentiles. That's different. The time of the church. So here he comes right here. Uh, Let's see, right here. People of the prince that shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary. So this is within that last seven-year period. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. There's your last week. Here it comes. And in the midst of that week, he shall cause the sacrifice of oblation to cease. Oblation, that is a special sacrifice that has to be done by the Holy of Holies, in the Holy of Holies, by the priest, a special priest. So this is their sacrificing, and it's broken when? In the middle of the week. Okay, so if you're understanding this, you were just given, you're just giving an understanding of 490 years or 70 weeks of seven, and there's a gap, and that gap was filled when? We're going to see now and understand that in order for this last seven to be able to be understood, you have to know that Daniel was talking about the Jews, not the Gentiles. The church then is eliminated. Now we get into the good part and the fun part. I went over this really quickly with you because of the fact that I wanted you to understand and see how important it is that Daniel, and if you can understand that, you understand the church, is that gap between the 483 years and the last seven. That's the church. Now, we're going to get into... What we were hoping to understand, as long as I've been doing this channel, and that is, is when the covenant is going to be, um, going to be put into place, when it'll be um, started. So, but however, then we've learned as time went on, what we need to do then is is just to be able to figure out the covenant when it's going to be signed. All we have to do is just look prior to that, and the church will be gone. So that should have made sense. I'm going to put down down there on the floor. Hope I don't have to go back to it again. Now, I'm going to get into 
this to be able to explain where we are today. Here it comes, folks. This is what I've been wanting to show you, and uh, I want you to understand because, yes, we can know when the rapture, the, the rapture is going to happen. Let's get right into it, and I'm going to give you scripture to follow through on this, okay? Let's focus it in. Okay, there it is. Rapture Harpazo. When's it going to happen? Because of events that have taken place in the last months, and much has been revealed to us, this is how we can understand it. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3 right here. Paul says, when they say peace and safety, what was, what was Paul's job? To help the Gentile world build, bring them into the fold. He was to, to teach the Gentiles that if they were to believe in the works of Jesus when he was cut off and crucified, remember? So if they were to understand that and they were to believe that Jesus was the Jews' Messiah and believed in his works, that he died on the cross, that they would also have eternal life. And so here it is that Paul is saying now, and he's talking about the time of when Jesus, the day of the Lord, when Jesus shows up in the clouds and he says, come forth, church, Gentile world, Jews included, come up and out of the world. And the reason for that is, is because next is a sudden destruction. Now, we've learned through Scripture that Psalm 83 speaks of a sudden destruction coming upon the enemies of Israel that surround them, not the outer ring of enemies. They're still there, but these are um, the sudden destruction seen in Psalm 83. So, air in the middle, someplace in here, before this sudden destruction happens, the rapture and those that are alive are harpazoed. Okay, when this happens, according to Daniel and understanding him, all wars are over. Why? Because <clears throat> Daniel explains to us that something will happen, and I'm just going to pull it up right here so there's no misunderstanding this, okay? Here it is. Excuse my notes, uh, scribbling notes, that's not necessarily for today as much as it was in the past. I saw a beast rise out of the sea. This is what Daniel's being shown. And, and then he goes on to talk about the powers that are behind him. And it comes down here. Uh, they worship the dragon, and he's now talking about the dragon here, wounded to death. Now, forget that part right there. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. Now, the beast... They were worshiping who is like unto the beast, who is able to make war with him. Here is the first beast in Revelation showing up. When is he going to show up, folks? Sudden destruction come upon them. When this sudden destruction comes, this world is going to be in chaos because we understand through Psalm 83 that this is a worldwide known seen event that God will do supernaturally. It will be a divine intervention. That's this right here. So the whole world is going to be in chaos. My point was, all wars are over. They're stopped. Who is it that's able to make war unto him? Here's the statement that tells you that when this actually takes place, this world is in chaos, somebody shows up. Exactly what Daniel said. Someone's going to show up, and who can make? No one will be able to. So if there's a covenant that's to be confirmed by him, more than likely at the UN, that's my conjecture. If that happens, he's going to be in control of the whole world. The war stop, right here. And the reason for that is, is because, and, and this is so important to understand is, is, is folks, there's, <clears throat> the, the, China is saying Taiwan's theirs. Kim Jong-un, they're of North Korea. He says, we're getting ready to go to, to take back our uh, South Korea. We're going to go to war here. You have the Ukraine war. You have Turkey that says, I'm going to get involved with the war that's happening right now. You have, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of the other ones, United States, and you have them in Afghanistan, you have them in Iraq, you have them near Iran. And all these wars are going on. And the wars are starting to build. The, the intent to war is starting to build throughout the whole complete world. 
What stops all that? Gosh, it's just amazing to me, folks. It's absolutely amazing. When the very thing that Daniel said was going to happen, when the son of perdition, which is seen, Antichrist shows up right here. That's what everyone calls him. I don't. I call him the son of perdition, but that's okay. I go with either one. Antichrist shows up. So you have, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. When that sudden destruction happened, who's going to be here to take over? The Antichrist. This is when he brings all wars to a stop. Because this becomes about Israel. Israel being able to build a temple and sacrifice. Exactly what scriptures tell us. Now, let's move on just a little bit further because there's more to it. Because at the same time as this sudden destruction, there's right here a war in heaven. Interesting. Because who's taken out of the way of the war in heaven? We go over here to... Uh, I'm, uh, folks, this is just simple scripture, but we couldn't understand it in, 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 until then. Excuse my scribbly notes here. Okay. Um, there appeared a wonder in heaven. That's what started this channel. That's what started everything. Remember that. We were told to look up. Here comes everything that's happened in the last six plus years. Okay, so let's go on. And she being with child travail. Okay, this is the rapture. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And here it talks about the dragon. And what we just got done talking about. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought, and his angels. Here's your war in heaven right here. Let's go back up here again so we understand what's going on. Uh, this right here, number four, drew a third part of the, the stars. This right here is the bad angels. This is the ones that actually joined Satan, and they fulfill the body of the serpent. Remember Adam and Eve, the serpent? Jesus, the head of the body of Christ, of God. And now you have Satan. And he has a body, and that body is his angels. That's his followers. And that's what this is speaking of right here. And this here is the dragon right here. Um, the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Now let's go on down here. This one is, is probably one of the most misunderstood pieces of scripture that I've run across in a long time. I won't say the only one. There's other ones. But... She brought forth a man-child. Who's the man-child, folks? That's Jesus, isn't it? This is, this is God's son, the man-child. So you have, here's Jesus. And she brought forth the man-child who was to rule all the nations with the rod of iron. Stop, right here. And her child was caught up unto God and to the throne. So here is Jesus, uh, centered coming out of Israel and then here is the church the child being born coming up was caught up this is Harpazo right here unto the throne and the woman fled into the wilderness that's another study because God keeps a remnant of the Jews okay we're going to go back to the war again which we just got done talking about because I want you to confirm that in scripture fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels who is all there Satan and all his. They're in heaven in this war in heaven. All right, let's go ahead and change the page here. And prevailed not, neither was there a place found any more in heaven. Satan's not allowed into heaven, but where is he? He's up there with Michael and his angels in a war. No one's dying here, folks. Satan is being contained. And the great dragon saw he was cast out, that old serpent called the devil Satan. Here it is for sure that it is telling you that it is Satan that we're talking about, which deceiveth the whole world. He can't deceive the whole world if he's not on the world. He's taken up and out of the way. He was cast out onto the earth where the angels were cast out with him. When is he seen next in scripture? Folks, when, when is... um. Satan seen next in scripture. He desecrates the temple. Where is that? That's in the middle. Middle of Daniel's prophecy. And he told you in Daniel 9.27. In the middle, he desecrates the temple. So it's the first beast that gets Satan's power. Why? He's up in heaven. Satan needs to give his power to someone to be able to control. God saw this whole thing from the beginning to the end, from the end to the beginning. And he says that, yeah, go ahead. What you're going to do is confirm a covenant with my people for seven years. And of course, it's broken in the middle. 
But the first three and a half, remember, it's broken down into two pieces, seven years. The first three and a half, Israel gets to build a temple. The church is gone. They begin to sacrifice. And then God opens their ears and their eyes to what it is that God said was going to happen. They begin to understand their Messiah was the one that they crucified. And then it brings an end. Remember, we read that in Daniel 9. Uh, end of all of that that the Jews are to be punished for. That Daniel, if you read it, he's praying for them. So, <clears throat> let's see here. I'm going to just jump back and see if I missed anything here that I wanted to bring up. Let's see. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold the red dragon. And then he says, he's now here. He's with, going to be with those that were seen with the first beast in Revelation 13. Do you want me to do that real quick with you? Because it just after a while, it just becomes a little bit too apparent here where we are. And the first beast, and here he is. He has all these. There's a difference here. There's some are gone, some of, okay, so. And then he tells about his wound. And they worshiped the dragon and gave power unto the beast and worshiped him and saying, they worshiped him. This is the first beast. They were told to worship Satan. Satan is gone, but he's taking the place of Satan, and he's saying, you will worship him. And for those of you that, that think that, when we go back here, right here, this sudden destruction, the wars will stop because the Antichrist shows up. And here's what the Antichrist is going to do, folks. I'm going to go right back to it again. There was given unto him a mouth speaking. This is, okay, <laughs> the church is gone. The sudden destruction has happened. The son of perdition shows up, and he confirms a covenant. Everyone knows who he is. The church is gone, folks. Okay, and here he is. He's standing in this power. Who is it that could war against him? I showed you that. This is, this is America is going to be held back. They're going to say, this person's going to say, I have got spiritual powers. I have the authority of Satan. America, basically, if, if you don't mind, it's just going to, America, you're not needed. So just shut up and sit down. And, and <laughs> kind of a crude way of putting, but let's just get right to it, okay? Back to it. And there was given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to do, to continue 40 and two months. There it is, you're three and a half years. He has powers for three and a half years until Satan shows up. Middle of the tribulation. And he opened his mouth in blasphemies against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. So he's cursing and swearing, and, and uh, let's go on. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. Who's the saints? Those that are going to believe Jesus after the rapture. He's going to try to make war with them. Because it ain't going to be easy, but they will become martyrs. Now, to overcome them, and the power was given unto him over all kindred, all tongues, and all nations. Anybody that is misunderstanding the whole complete job that this son of perdition has, that he's supposed to do, it really leaves out that COP28, doesn't it? It really doesn't have anything to do with it at all. And I've been saying that since day one. That is not part of the covenant. But yet you can see, though, where it is that this needs to take place. It needs to come in. The, 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 the church folks is, is not, not needed here at all. They need to go home because God's going to complete his work with the Jews that last seven years. It has nothing to do with the Jews. So let's go back over this again. Satan is gone. Revelation 12, what happens? A war in heaven. Antichrist shows up. Revelation 13. Let's do this all over again. Where's the rapture? They say peace and safety. Now, I'm going to get into this peace and safety for you. Okay, let's just do that real quick. I want to explain this to you. Of all the times that I have tried to figure out the peace and safety thing, I haven't been able to. Not until I finally understood what Israel's doing. Israel has gone to war with one enemy called Hamas and is doing its best to eliminate them. And the reason for that is, is because Israel can no longer live in peace with Hamas because they keep firing missiles. So much so that the bordering towns between Gaza and Israel 
had to evacuate their home. Up in northern Israel, the same thing happened, but it's Hezbollah. Hezbollah keeps firing missiles into Israel, not powerful enough to go deep into Israel. So again, those that were at the border between Lebanon and Israel had to evacuate their homes. Netanyahu, other military um, leaders, uh, those within the Knesset are saying, the people of Israel are yelling and screaming at us. They want to know when they can go back into their homes. And they says, and, and, and Netanyahu made this the most clear. He said that we're going to continue the war until those that have been evacuated in Israel can live safely. They can live then and sit back and relax. No more sirens going off. No more running to bomb shelters. And they can feel safe and they can live in peace. That is the mission right now of Israel to do that. Folks, I want to make this really clear. The war that is happening today is in Psalm 83. Just do not miss that. That is, it's happening. And then the hidden ones were shown to us to be the hostages. Hostages are going to play a role because Israel's not going to give up until they get the hostages back. It's just plain flat have told the world and the world is coming against Israel because the whole complete world is trying to find a way to blame all of this on the Jews. Everything is the Jews' fault. You have the left within the Knesset that are trying to find a way out of this. You have the ones on the right in the Knesset said the only way out of it is to war. Even if Israel wins this war, or if they should lose it, it won't make any difference. None at all. Hezbollah isn't going to make any difference. What they do, how they do it. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in the West Bank. It doesn't matter about Turkey saying that they're going to get involved. It doesn't matter about Egypt and what they want. Or uh, Qatar trying to form some sort of a peace treaty of some sort. And then the, and the world's attempting that right now. From the UK to the UN to the United States. All united against Israel that they should stop the war. Not going to happen. Now they can stop the war that Israel is in, they can do something to hamper that or to slow it down, that's fine. They can do it if they want. But they're missing the whole point. That there's a time that God says, no matter what, I'm going to step in. Remember, God says, I reserve that last seven years at his discretion. And he's going to remove the church and then he's going to divinely get involved in this earth that the world should know. We'll go back here again real quick to finish this up, folks. That's a long video. <clears throat> here you have it. Be silent, God. Thine enemies, a tumult. Crafty counsel against them, including the hidden ones. Here they are right here, the hostages. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That then, obviously, what's happening today, for they have consulted together with one. They have confederate against thee. And up here it says, with one head, and that is Iran. Iran is the one that's supporting them along with Qatar and others. But one head, they're coming all together and this includes America. <clears throat> so it goes on to say who they are. And if you figure that out on a map, you're going to see those are the ones that are surrounding Israel right now. And that's the one that God says, it's necessary for me to deliver you from because you're going to have to go to sacrificing. So it goes on and talks about them. Out here And here it is right here, God make them. This is God speaking. At the end of this, when God gets done, and more than likely in one day, and I have a ton of scripture to back that up, what God is going to be is a divine intervention that's going to be over with in one night, one day, that soon. So that at the end of this, that men may know thou whose name alone is Jehovah, are most high over all the earth. So when I go back to what it is that I said right here, all war's over. 
when this sudden destruction happens, and it gets to a point to where they're speaking of peace and safety, it says when they say, and they said they're going to have it, it makes obvious sense. Now it does. It didn't back then. It makes sense. Rapture. Thessalonians 5.3 say, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. I put this in here, right here, this little bit of timeline, could happen at any moment now, any time now, because God needs to say to the world, I don't care about what war is going on where. God is basically going to tell us, well, has through Scripture said, Psalm 83, I'm going to step in. And then he goes back to Daniel and says, you know, that last seven years, I'm going to start it. What starts that last seven years? God eliminates the surrounding enemies. And then Israel needs to sacrifice. They need to build a temple. What's the purpose then? God says, so they can clear the land that they can build their temple. God's not worried about the, well, worried. I, I don't know what God thinks. I would understand scripture to say that, that what is happening is Psalms 83 so that we would know that when they're searching for the hidden ones and they're not going to give up until they find them and then Israel will be able to live safely in peace without a constant fear of a barrage of missiles coming over and wiping out a family. The middle of a shopping day, the middle of doing whatever they do over there, you know, whatever, okay, all of a sudden the siren goes off and they all have little maps on their phone. It'll come up and show you where your next bomb shelter is and they have to run and hide. No, that's coming to an end. And it is done in such a way that God told us through the prophet Daniel that when this person shows up and signs a covenant, no, he doesn't sign it, he confirms it. With his power and authority given to him for three and a half years by Satan, he is the one that's going to stand up and say, I have been told by Satan that you get the seven years, Satan knowing full well in the middle, he's going to get thrown back down to the earth again. <coughs> I showed you that in Revelation 12. One more time, and folks, I'm going to let you go because this is so vitally important. I don't know how much time we actually have left, to be honest with you. I really don't know. But things are very close. Very he they're heating up. It has nothing to do with Israel being in a war. It has to do with when God says so. And God said and explained it to us. And Paul said and was talking about the rapture. And he spoke of a sudden destruction that would happen. But when they are saying peace and safety, and that's what we're looking for. But it's not peace and safety of any type of UN action or anything like that. It's Israel wanting, they're not taking any of this into consideration, folks. They're wanting their land where they can live. They're not thinking about building a temple right now. They're thinking about getting their land to be able to live in peace. No more worrying about having to run to bomb shelters. And they feel safe when they move back into their homes again. That's what's on the mind of Israel. It's not on the mind of God. God says, there's a time when I'm going to intervene. I'm going to come in and I'm going to do something. Folks, you have it. You have it there. I don't know, um, <clears throat> I don't know what else it is that, that, that um, I can possibly explain. I'm going to take your questions one at a time. You know, I read all the replies. I, 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 I go through the trouble to make sure I try to find all of them and read them. Some of them, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. I read them all if I can. And uh, I'll do my best to answer any questions that you might have. But I hope this laid it out in such a way that you can understand we're there. This is what God told us to be watching for, and we could not understand it until these events actually took place, and they're taking place. So what started this site? Let's think about that for a minute, Revelation 12. And it says, when you see these things happen, look up. And when you see them happen, know then that's your sign. And that's exactly what was given to us September 23rd, it was 2017. And all this has unfolded, and we've been watching. We have stayed with it. We haven't given up on this. And we believe and we have faith in what it is that God told us, explained to us through his prophets, Daniel, Asaph, through Paul. All of this comes out. Jeremiah, uh, Zechariah. All of this is they explain all this in a time and go back to Daniel 9. 
to end and to complete that that was told to him. That God would said to Daniel, he said, the 490 years will be complete, then Jesus returns to this earth. And it'll be done with the what? The Jews. So in the time of the Gentiles is that period of time between the 69th week and the 70th week, between the 483 years and the last seven, taking it to 490. So I hope that does it for you. I, if, again, questions, let me know, folks. Until Sunday, uh, I have another video. If something else comes up, I'll definitely let you know. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Talk to you soon.